Hi, I'm Sue Kropbauer, and I work with 30 to 50-somethings that are ready to make a significant life or career change. They're looking to build out a plan to achieve their personal or professional goals. A quick note before we get started on this week's topic. For those folks that have been reaching out to me via Facebook, please forgive my lack of response. I am currently completely locked out of Facebook and working with their support teams to figure out how to get back in. As a result, I can't see nor respond to any messages there. As a fallback, if you're looking to get in touch with me, pop over to my website and send me a message there. Cool? This week, I'm nearing the top of the Scoville heat scale for this sweet and spicy shorty series for midlifers. Last week, we took a bite out of the Carolina cayenne with spicy topic number five, procrastination or why you always find you're getting backed into a corner. For those of you just seeing this series, the Scoville heat scale is the official measurement of the spiciness or heat of chili peppers. This week, we're jumping into the, into the top habanero hot at 35, 35,000 shoe Scoville heat units for our topic. Get ready to be uncomfortable as we jump into spicy topic number six. In with the good, out with the bad. Is it more enjoyable to eat a banana split or a tofu sandwich on whole grain bread? Is that a rhetorical question, Sue? <laughs> it is more pleasurable to watch your favorite movie for the ninth time or spend time at the gym. One of these choices is much more enjoyable in the short term, but it adds to your long-term pain. The best long-term choices aren't often as much fun in the short term. It's kind of a cruel joke by life, right? But this mindset is the primary cause of folks' procrastination tendencies. Instead of asking yourself what would feel good right now, ask yourself what you can do right now that will benefit you in the future. Say, one tofu sandwich in place of a bacon cheeseburger might not have a huge impact today, but oh, it'll make a huge difference if you make it a habit or salad or something else if you don't like tofu. Anyway, we all attempt to predict the future when making decisions. You employ this strategy even when you're looking for a snack. I mean, consider your options and imagine how you'll feel when you're eating it. What's pleasurable short-term is often detrimental in the long-term with poor choices. I mean, really, imagine your decision to eat that bacon cheeseburger replicated for the next five years. Anybody seen that, um, seen that movie called Supersize? Oy, oy, oy. What would be the logical result? If you ate that, that bacon cheeseburger, that banana split each day for five long years, will your physique and health be, health be better? Or will it be worse? So it's critical to maintain long-term focus with short-term goals rolling up under the long-term goal. Productivity requires you take action too. One of the most effective ways to limit your activity and slide into dangerous territory when pursuing your personal or professional objectives is to focus on Focus on the negative. Focus on, you know, the half empty versus half full, on, on all the potential things that could go wrong. Throughout your life, you're going to face decisions that affect your finances, your health, and, well, your overall quality of life. We must often decide whether we accept or reject the impending risk of these decisions. Naturally, the way you evaluate and process different opinions plays an important role in your anxiety, and resulting outcomes that you imagine for yourself. Um, like, imagine you received a performance review at work that was quite positive overall, good, but contained a few constructive comments about where you could improve and, and you find yourself fixating on those remarks. Rather than feeling good about the, the positive aspects of your review, all the good things that were said about you, you feel angry and upset about the few critical constructive criticisms. Sound familiar? Or, or, or get stuck imagining your business will result in bankruptcy and homelessness rather than create a new stream of income for yourself. Worry, 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 worry. I'm a worrier, by the way, calling me out. 
That is a sure way to ensure that you stay stuck and don't do anything. The truth is, many outcomes just can't be predicted. The only way to know the truth and the outcome is to try. Ruminating on the negative can take a serious toll on achieving your short and your long-term goals. So taking steps to combat this, this bad software, we've talked about that in the past, bad software, this bias that's running through your head can play a huge role in boosting your mental well-being and achieving the success that you desire. So great advice, Sue, but really, how can you avoid assuming that the worst won't happen? Well, Consider real risks. In many cases, the only risk is to your pride and your ego. So is this really a risk? Feeling foolish or feeling like you didn't do well? Consider the risk and decide if you can handle it. And, um, you know, have you heard of the Ben Franklin method? I often use this to put down details and potential outcomes of a decision. I make a, I make a, uh, a table. Franklin's technique is to, to put two lists side by side in two columns on a sheet of paper. List the pros in one column and the cons in the other. For many of us, that list may be just enough to help us visualize both sides of a decision and lets you step back from the emotion and see it from a neutral perspective and make an educated decision. Another, another idea. Focus, forget the negative, focus on the positive outcomes. Once you've decided the risk is manageable, well, imagine it with a positive outcome. When the future is appealing, you don't have to motivate yourself or, or force yourself to take action. It will happen automatically. I mean, visualize what success will look like on a daily basis. Write it down in your journal. Put a sticky note on your phone or your bathroom mirror. All will work to keep the positive visual picture in front of your mind. Lots of folks, including me, use vision boards. I have, I have a vision board exercise in, one of, in my Kickstart Your Comeback program. It's really good. You might want to check that out. How about rewarding yourself for any positive movement on your goals, your tasks, and your works? Even, even small steps forward is worthy of a, of a reward and a celebration. Just not the banana split or the bacon cheeseburger all the time. <laughs> Here's a great quote for today by Rick Warren. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing it a bit from memory. And I'm going to take some artistic license here. Let me think. Um, transformation is a process. And as life happens, there are lots of ups and downs. It's a journey of discovery. And there's moments when you're on the mountaintop and moments when you're in the valley. But all inform and enrich your journey. So how your brain views the future has a major impact on your motivation and your actions. Maintain a positive image of your future and, well, your motivation will remain high. And as I like to say, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I bet you make forward progress naturally with a positive attitude. Negative expectations, that negative Nelly, that half empty versus half full on the other end, will take all the wind out of your sails. I promise you it will. Well, we went habanero hot this week and you bravely faced the heat. Way to go. At the risk of repeating myself, I want you to check out my Purpose to Impact course because if you grab it today, you'll get a free bonus called the Mindset Reset. It's 52 weeks of a breakthrough challenges that I'll send you every Sunday. It's just a simple activity you can do each week for the entire year and integrate it into your life so you stay motivated to tackle your wildest dreams and help keep that negative Nelly out of your head. Check out Purpose to Impact using the link in the description and I'll see you next week as we start rounding and we're well, not even rounding. We rounded home base. We're going to slide into home base. I love these baseball analogies. You have a delightful week. Again, remember, if you need to get in touch with me, go out to my website at the link below and leave me a message there since I'm still locked out of Facebook. Have a great week.